Hello everyone, and welcome back to Nomoria, the Scarred Land. Now, the first thing we're doing today is we're going to set up our military. Now, the way we're going to do that for now is we're actually going to start all the way over to the right at uniforms. We're going to go with a new uniform, and it will be called Naked. That is, no equipment of any kind at all. Which is what most of our gnomes will be right now because they have no weapons of any kind. And then we go positions. We're going to name a new one. We're going to call that one Naked. Now the perks, these are why we're setting up them like this. We're going to set the first perk as Way of the Gnome. Increased attack speed, attack damage, dodge chance, and dodge rate when no armor or weapon is equipped. Hence, naked. And that will be them. Their uniform. You have to set the uniform. Now, this is really important. Retreat if bleeding. Retreat to equip. Those should always be on pretty much no matter what. Assist squad leader, really, it kind of depends. You know, if you have like 20 on 20, it's a good idea to kind of take down guys first to make the numbers on your side instead of displacing your damage across the entire enemy formation. You pick one guy off at a time, you'd be better off. We move on to formations. And again, naked. Perk for this one Let's see these pretty much all require weapons we'll just do keep your eyes open just lets them see further doesn't really do anything leader of course we gotta set all of the basic positions or we have to set all five positions for the squad now we're gonna tell naked to avoid enemies. Now what that means is unless I tell them to attack somebody, they're going to try to run away from anybody that's trying to come at them until they get cornered. Once they get cornered, they're going to go on the offensive. So we're not going to worry about squads just yet. We're going to do a new uniform. And we're going to call this any. For now, whatever you can get your hands on, put it on. And this will be for our main military members. So we have any. New position as well will be any. Now his perk will be different because he will have most likely a weapon. So what I like to do for these is to either go for knock him down or disarm. And right now we're going to go for disarm because I would rather remove the arms and the ability for my enemies to hurt me and leave them basically with just their teeth. A uniform, of course, will be any. Retreat as well. And now this one we will be putting assist squad later on because I want them to both gang up on the same person. Now formation, of course, new. We're going to call this squad one. The perk being each increased melee damage for each member with a melee weapon. There we go. Leader, any. And we only have two right now, but I'll go ahead and set these all up for any's. Now they will not have avoid enemies, and they will have defend gnomes. So the first squad. The lar oh I can't even the larvaloneers okay I like to just know who I, I like the names that they give them it's nice but in, you know you eventually you end up guessing okay who's in that squad who's in that squad if I have squads with names on them I'll know which persons are in that squad so the first formation squad one is going to be cloud of course. And cell fire. And then we'll do a new squad. Squad.
squad one naked. These, of course, will be changed as we get more weapons and items. They'll be upgraded from the naked to whether a ranged or a melee. And we just need to do two naked squads. This is just so we're not completely caught off guard when the first enemies show up. It's better to have everybody pounding on one guy than only one or two people pounding on three or four guys. There we go. And that, I believe, should settle it. Now, if you get something like this in the middle of the screen here where it says Friday, Brawling, Sword, Axe, that's a little glitch that pops up when you're messing around in these menus too much. So at that point, just save what you're doing. Come back and it goes away. So we have Squad 1, Cloud, and Cell Fire. Now, as soon as I press play, and considering that Cloud and Cell Fire do not have another job currently going right now, see Foraging, Foraging. As soon as they are done foraging, I believe they should run to these crates right here and equip a weapon and or armor. So let's see who gets it. We'll press play now. Maybe it might after might be after they're done with their current task because I don't have a training ground set up. Now I know before they go training, they will try to equip themselves. Looks like they're going to keep foraging for now. So let's take a look at our workshops. See what we are able to build. Workshops. We're definitely going to want a sawmill as soon as we can. The first thing I believe... I don't like this menu. I like the drop-down menu. Workshops. I believe this stone cutter is the one that turns the raw stone into what I need it to be. Just gotta remember how to rotate. Oh, that's how you rotate the screen. Just gotta remember how to rotate objects. If you ever need to know what key bindings do what, just go under controls. Rotate item right. I, I believe I actually programmed that myself, so yours probably won't be that. Alright, stone cutter. Have him face this way. I think that's the first one I need. Again, it'll take them a little bit to build it because they need to build the chair, all that good stuff. So we'll get the stone cutting right away. And then I'm also going to want a carpenter. He'll do the same thing that these small workbenches are doing, quicker, more efficiently. So we'll have those two built up. They're going for a drink, and he's going to go finish her work. How nice of him. And someone came to take over his job. Look, a chair or something. Probably a chair. Oh, a workbench is being built. Fantastic. That means they're going to work on one of these very soon. Oh, we have somebody who went idle. Ah, I did. I went lazy and I went and equipped the weapon and armor. I took everything, the sword, the helmet, and the breastplate, all to myself. I am so greedy. Well, better put good use to that when enemies show up and uh, defend your fellow com comrades. Right, we have a lot of stuff laying around now. Let's see, we have rocks, dirt, clay. Let's designate an area first. We gotta remove some of the wall. Let's see here. Remove wall, mine wall. There we go. We'll take out about this much. And we're going to place a wood stockpile down here, that's plainly for wooden logs. Oh, now I have a pickaxe, a sword, and a helmet, and the breastplate. This guy, 
he just can't keep stuff away from him. Anything shows up right now to fight us, though, they are in big trouble. He would tear them apart. That being said, I'm not sure I know exactly what his weapon skills are. Sword 7, Axe 11, not too fantastic. Brawling is pretty up there. Pretty good dodge. Seems he'd be better with a ranged weapon, but by the time I get ranged weapons, his sword skills are going to be astronomically high. So we've just got some work that needs to get done. Okay. All of the food indoors has been harvested. And we have plenty for now. We will be needing a little bit more than this. And we do have a little bit of room, so let's go ahead and add another farm. We're going to plant strawberries here. We're going to give them a three priority strawberries. And then up at the top here, I'm going to do a cotton farm. Just so that when we need cotton, we've got some already stockpiled. Cotton does not turn into golems. Any items that don't turn into golems, I will stockpile freely. Anything that does turn into golems needs to be in a stockpile. And even then, this game will glitch a little bit and occasionally a gnome will go and put some rock in the stockpile, but the game won't consider it in the stockpile, and when enough of those are near each other, they'll turn into a golem, which could be pretty disastrous in the beginning of the game, so that's why I'm trying to take it really slow with all the mining that I'm doing. Even an, even an armored gnome can be killed by a golem, just a dirt golem. Check on the progress. Thank you very much, Cellfire, for doing this work. We're still doing planks, for chairs. See, so we've got a chisel, we've got a workbench. We just need a couple more planks for some chairs. Wizzy is doing the other one. Or Wizzy. Our gnomes definitely need some names. Some unique names. I don't see any enemies or anything on the map yet. Day three, no monsters, no bears, no honey badgers. I'll probably go say hi to the first goblin I see. With my sword, anyway. Okay. Let's see if there's anybody just sitting around doing any nothing. Looks like most everybody's sleeping right now. Okay. Those who aren't sleeping are, of course, hauling. Speaking of, we'll go ahead and set up a stockpile for the raw fruit so it can be brought inside. So we go down to food, fruit. Want all of these fruits brought inside. We'll give it medium priority. Once they're done hauling the dirt and the rocks, they'll go haul the food inside. That'll mean our gnomes will not have to go outside to possible death together. And then once I get everything hauled and cleaned up inside here, I'll start expanding more outwards. Before I open up my wall, I'm going to have a training ground built. Before I can get that, these two need to be built. Just to, yeah, he's building the chair now, so one of these will be built. I don't know which one. I can't tell them which one to do first. Or can I? Task. Yeah, no, you cannot prioritize the task. I'd like to say it's whichever one you put down first, but I've tested that and it's not exactly true. Let's go ahead and speed this up a little bit. I'd like to get this part done. See how long it takes him to craft the chair. Once There we go. Beautiful. I was hoping this would be done first. What are you doing? You're making more. 
Okay, you're making more of those. All right, I'll let you do that for now. But the priority on this is about to be dropped down to six. <laughs> Excuse me, because as soon as this this uh, carpenter is done, his priority is going to be ride, risen to the top. I want him to work at this one before they work at the other ones. Cloud, you better not be going to sleep right as an enemy is showing up. You have all of the equipment. And as far as I know, there is no way to force your gnomes to wake, so if something attacks while your main military guys are sleeping in the beginning of the game, you're in trouble. But my gnomes are excellent ninjas. They can beat you to death with their fists and then bite your eyes out. And they will bite, too. They don't have weapons, but they will use their teeth punch and kick and explode brains with fists why is this food not being hauled in do you guys truly have more things to do okay carpenter chair workbench and I know I'm going to start needing things like the table I'm going to need two barrels for my brewery, and then you're raised. Fantastic. So as soon as these people wake up and get this dirt hauled, I will set a stockpile for lumber. So they will no longer have to go all the way up to the top of the world to get their lumber. The lumber will just be brought to them. I want this dirt to be hauled first so we don't get killed by golems. It is priority one. Ah, thank you very much. Let's see, this will be the woodworking area, this will be the stone working area in the back, so we're going to put the lumber stockpile with a pretty good priority. Logs. Only logs. Planks can be stored on site for now. I really don't want to be making uh, hundreds and hundreds of planks just yet. In the future, that will come. When I start building construction projects for nice, pretty looking rooms, I'd like to have hundreds of blocks just available so that they can knock it all out at one time. And our logs are being brought in, that's great. This isn't being worked on because there's no planks, so I need to build... The next workshop is going to be a sawmill. Now the sawmill won't be able to be made until I get stone being processed. Because it to uh, to make the sawmill, I need to make a saw blade, which I will make inside one of the stone working workshops. And I can't place this just yet. I need a little bit more room. I need someone to come mine this for me. I must be sleeping, of course. It is dark outside, so if there are any enemies outside my wall, the only way I would know would be with music, which I have turned really low. Cutting down some trees, we're planting the fields. This all looks great. I would like to get these logs moved in as soon as possible because I believe logs will turn into a goal. I'm going to cancel the cutting of these trees until these logs get brought in. Dirt is being hauled right now. It's got a higher priority. As soon as the dirt's done, they'll do the logs. You are crafting something here. That is fantastic. If you right-click the building, it puts you right into it. Workbench. Needs plank. Well, then why are you standing over here? I assume you're doing something besides just standing there waiting for someone to bring you a plank. I hope so. Okay, well the logs are being brought in from upstairs. We need to get wheelbarrows and bags made ASAP because that will allow us to haul multiple items at the same time. Right now they can only carry one log at a time. 
Once we get a wheelbarrow, I think it's uh, 14, 13 or 14 items at a time. It's much more significant. Right, that is out of the way. We can go ahead and place this stonemason. Fantastic. Now, what does this need? A workbench. Okay, I believe I saw him working on the workbench. You just need planks. What about him? We're going to cancel everything on these except for planks. And then we're going to go to overview and we're going to turn off generated jobs. So these guys are going to do nothing but planks for now. We're going to turn workbench off. Do not accept generated jobs. Just make planks. If I make anything else, I want it to be done at the carpenter. It's significantly faster. And these are the only things that can make planks right now. Alright, we're getting the hauling done. Great. After the hauling of the logs, they'll start hauling the food. Now, logs can only fit one here. But we have a couple crates that they gave us to start with. So I'm going to give the logs two of the crates. And then the food is going to get the other crate. Food is going to go in this room here. Which we will start mining out slowly. Now, as you see where I've started dragging the cursor over, it's turned red. That means if I mine over here, I'm going to have another entrance down below. And I do not want that because that entrance can go down to where enemies spawn. So if you see the red there, just stop one before it. And then I do kind of like an outline of where it is. So I know not to go over there by accident in the future. So I'm going to take it this way. Now, later on in the game it won't be a bad idea to kind of open up a hole like this and then just kinda leave a fence in the way so nothing can get in and then just shoot this stuff over it. I mean there's all kinds of trickery you can do in this game to get really good experience points for your skills and not be actually in harm's way. So these they're gonna get this done really quick and then they're gonna prioritize this dirt over the logs. So I don't want to give them too many more jobs until these logs are hauled. And I can actually prioritize the cleaning of these logs by telling them to clean the floor here. And in anybody who is already hauling, if they don't have something else more important than hauling, they'll go and prioritize hauling these logs for me. Which is good if you have a lot of stuff that needs to be picked up and they're just not doing it. Like this. They'll haul these logs for me. I'll be a little less concerned about that. Stick for the table. Why are you doing that first? That's silly. In fact, just to speed things up a little bit, I'm going to add two more of these, and I'm going to suspend this. I don't really want them doing silly stuff. Oh, no, I don't want to suspend that. I want to suspend the table. Cancel the table. I really need these workbenches and chairs for these particular things. But hopefully we'll get to that the next episode. For now, I'm going to go ahead and cut it here. I appreciate you guys watching, and I hope to see you next time.